Hello everyone, welcome to my talk on Practical Guide to CICD Security Gating. Just a small introduction before we go forward. I'm Ben, um, CTO and co-founder at, uh, at Armo. Um, I'm one of the maintainers of the Cubescape project. Uh, I'm relatively active in CNCF and uh, different uh, um, technical advisory groups around uh, Kubernetes and CNCF itself and in general an open source enthusiastic and someone who comes from the security background. Uh, so let's just jump into it. So uh, I'm representing uh, uh, here two uh, organizations or two things. One is uh, uh, Armo, uh, uh, open source uh, security, security uh, company, uh, which is located in, mainly in Israel, but we have uh, employees around the whole world. Um, and uh, we have around 40 employees. Uh, on the other hand, I'm also representing Cubescape, as I told you. I'm one of the uh, uh, maintainers of Cubescape. Uh, it is the one of the most fastest growing security uh, tools uh, around Kubernetes. Um, I need, should have updated this uh, slide. We are beyond 9,000 uh, 9, stars on GitHub and we are in CNCF uh, uh, sandboxing and hopefully we are going to be in um, in uh, um, incubation uh, in the in 2024. So um, you know today and in this conference, it's really funny to talk about world without CI/CD. But you know, in just for the sake of the talk and sake of what we're going to talk about, um, it's just like really uh, important to think a little bit about what is what would be the world today without CI/CD and automation. And it is, uh, it is, uh, you know, it's really hard to comprehend today. Uh, it, it becomes so uh, embedded in the industry and in our way of work that today it's really hard to think the world without it. Having said that, um, I can say that I have an like, experience of nearly like 20 years in the in the industry. Um, and you know, it, this wasn't always as clear as it's today. And even, you know, 20 years ago, we had some processes around and we were, you know, trying to automate a lot of things, but it wasn't articulated in a way today. And, you know, every one of us knows this really great uh, 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 um, diagram of uh, explaining, you know, what is CICD? Uh, um, the, the way that we are you know, uh, implementing things and building things and then testing them out, releasing uh, them, deploying, operating and monitoring, and then, you know, getting back to coding. And these things are, are today are are, uh, uh, are so intertwined and so uh, uh, overlapping even that, that we even uh, sometimes can't, can't comprehend it. Uh, and even this, you know, in this great uh, event we are having right now, it is one of the major things that are uh, have also evolved during this time, uh, during the uh, the last uh, uh, you know five to ten years, um, and even today we can understand that most of the things are going in parallel. They are happening uh, in the same time, and the whole idea behind this is simply you know freeing up and empowering us to to work fast, to deliver fast. Uh, uh, to uh, uh, um, to to react fast, and uh, and you know, one of the funny things that I've been talking uh, about with uh, uh, someone who is being uh, auditing our company is, for example, that well, what's happened to release notes, what hap what happened with the you know, delivery packages, and our whole uh, uh, approach to these kind of things uh, has changed. And this is just only one example. So. Um, the whole idea of uh, of a CI/CD pipeline um, is actually to manage the whole process, um, and if uh, we are adding the you know security into the uh, into the you know to the goals of our deliveries, we are also looking into how to reduce the risk involved in deploying software. Right, so it, it it is like very uh, this whole empowerment is 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 awesome, and it is like I think the one of the ultimate goals, um, 
but on the other hand you know with uh, you know with great uh, powers you know come, uh, comes great responsibility we also have to include security uh, uh, in, in this process and planning things ahead of time so let's start with you know us having the source code uh, you know somewhere we we work with uh, even if we are talking about source code as a, a software uh, or if, if we are talking about configurations uh, infrastructure as a code it's it, it's in github uh, uh, or any other Git provider for that sake and there is some kind of a ci cd server uh, again it can uh, today we have a great uh, very you know dominant uh, uh, um, dominant uh, approach that that sometimes the ci cd or at least the ci part of this uh, of the process is also located in the same place where we are storing our code this not this wasn't necessarily true for a very long time and even if not today uh, uh, not today this not a necessarily thing it can happen it, it, it's a good thing and you have to obviously choose what's best fitting you but if, as a result of uh, of our processes which are running on our source code and then the ci uh, 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 processes are entering we are building artifacts the artifacts are en ending up in our exam in my example in some kind of a container uh, uh, registry and that from there on we are deploying things uh, uh, into our uh, our destination uh, where we are actually serving this uh, uh, th these functionalities from uh, and at the end obviously we need to monitor what's happening there and we have all of these tools which I mostly you know I, I'm pretty sure that most of you are pretty aware of of, of all these tools <clears throat> you see here and they are are, are uh, each of them has its uh, uh, you know its uh, uh, pros and cons and you know it's really not my place to talk about what is good for you what is not uh, but these are you know most uh, one of the most prominent things to to, to discuss here but the interesting thing here but uh, which I wanted to tell you about is that you know developers are today much more involved in what's happening uh, you know what we call shifting right on on the right hand on the monitoring part uh, than they were before uh, it, it it was you know again going back 10 to 20 years ago it was really hard to uh, think that how that developers have direct access and effects on on the uh, on the uh, installation uh, uh, parameters of a, of a software and it doesn't go through a lot of you know manual labor or system engineering uh, uh, this thing and today these things with all the velocity we've involved in our processes this has changed so sorry just getting back here so if I want to draw up a little bit of better uh, uh, you know uh, example and I'm you know as someone who's coming from mainly from the Kubernetes world okay it's, it's really hard for me not to uh, uh, not to uh, uh, bring uh, here uh, Kubernetes examples uh, and Argo um, but in general you know this uh, this is true for many uh, for different other kind of, of deployments so please you know take this into account so we have a developer we have a developer a devops engineer who is you know working in uh, 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 in the top left part on the source environment uh, uh, the applications are de delivered then the CSE processes are building and testing they're bringing into a container registry um, a container registry then uh, uh, you know using uh, our favorite GitOps tool is 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 making sure that uh, that you know when we are giving the proper uh, uh, commands or, or definitions in, in our git uh, uh, GitOps is pulling uh, these all these artifacts from the uh, container registry and delivering it to our favorite cluster or container orchestration tool um, and from there on uh, we are we are going into what we call monitoring mode uh, and we are using monitoring tools to understand what's happening right now so this is like an, a very very neat and nice uh, uh, definition and I think that it's it's uh, uh, something you know 
we could be very proud of, we could be very happy. And, you know, the question is going on, okay, what can be wrong here? So there are a lot of pain of points uh, uh, from a security perspective in, uh, and it's not just, you know, to this setup, which I showed you, but, you know, through this setup, we also have to be very mindful of these issues. We have to make, uh, make sure okay, that the configurations uh, are okay, all the definitions of the applications are okay. Uh, they have don't introduce new security risks and also even hardening our, our existing environments. Uh, uh, we have to make sure if we are like a little bit going back even further back to the application development phase, we also have to make sure that the application is is being you know implemented according to the security best practices and all the input checks are in in place but we also have to make sure that there is there are no uh, vulnerabilities which we in our supply chain which we are pulling in checking in for uh, you know any other uh, external third party uh, uh, things which we are using in our application you know even in in-house deployments um, you know, as a, as today described, more than ninety percent of the code is usually coming from a supply chain uh, vendor, uh, which can be either open source or closed source project. But in anyhow, uh, uh, it is something you know they have to be mindful what kind of security risk it, it involves. We have to make sure that all the the in case of Kubernetes, the RBAC configurations are okay. Uh, the all the uh, access control definitions are in place. And you know, also we have to take this whole thing into account of uh, when we are in production. All the uh, definitions are ri uh, right for production. We have forgot some debug on. So these are you know a huge bunch of things to be mindful. And obviously you know we are here to talk about how to tackle them. So. So we have to be very mindful of shifting the security as you know left to uh, as possible, making the the developers uh, and sometimes even DevOps engineers very mindful in their processes about the security, and and there are multiple parts of the security and security has to be uh, uh, deployed across this whole system and we'll see how. So uh, obviously, when the security is shifted left. We have to make sure that uh, the security is tackled on the earlier stages when it in a, of the development life cycle as it uh, uh, possible. Just as with other, uh, for example, te uh, functional testing. You know, we know that from functional testing, everyone knows that that you know we can have end product tests and system tests, and beforehand we have we can have component level tests and uh, and unit tests. And and the most important part is for for a developer even a developer even before he pushes uh, his uh, uh, code into uh, the the code repository, is to check that all the unit tests are pass passing. Why? Because it is clear that, uh, uh, that it is the cheapest thing uh, to do, the cheapest thing to solve. Now. If the uh, the process is shifting, uh, if the process is uh, rapidly deploying and shifting right, the security have to shift left. And again, shifting left is very important because detecting the security issues on the pre-deployment or on the or in deployment is very costly. It is just the same uh, as functional testing. You have to be mi very mindful about that just as with functional testing. And today, every one of us knows that as the sooner we are detecting functional problems, the cheaper they are uh, uh, to solve. The same goes with security. So where is the first thing where we can you know, detect changes? It is actually, sorry, going back just for a minute. So where is the first thing, where, uh, where is the you know, last, you know chain in the in the whole process where uh where we can detect security issues is actually obviously in the deployment so in the deployment uh, of our cluster we can detect vulnerabilities using any kind of open source projects and you know aqua uh, aqua trivi project is a very well known uh, uh, project to do that cubescape uh, is also doing that claire is doing that uh, everyone has its, you know, advantages, and also, you know, my, uh, misconfigurations. 
checking that all the configurations are, are, are in best practices and you have multiple projects to do that, Kubescape also does that. So, for example, you can use uh, a in-cluster vulnerability scanner, for example, Grive, uh, uh, also to list all the vulnerabilities you have. Obviously, it's an overwhelming, and if you're looking for all my previous talks in, in Linux Foundation CNCF, you will hear a lot about vulnerability management. But let's go a little bit further. So if we're going a, a, a little bit a step back, um, we will end up with seeing, you know, container registry. Uh, how we're dealing with, uh, 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 with container registry scanning. And, you know, there can be, again, multiple tools of, of, of doing that. Today, uh, um, you know, both uh, Trivi, Gripe and other open source security uh, scanners are able to do that, also Kubescape. But, you know, you, in, in your artifact repository, uh, uh, most of the newest uh, uh, container uh, repositories can also provide you with scanning. But, you know, let's go a little more laughter. Let's see what's happening in the CICD processes. So, um, you know, you can scan your, uh, uh, your code and your, uh, your source code with, uh, with scanners. Most of them are closed source. There are some open source examples. Uh, but you can also scan for vulnerabilities inside, uh, uh, in, inside the CICD processes, which is, again, is bringing more, the things more left on the side. So, for example, if you are adding uh, uh, um, a CI/CD process uh, of uh, of scanning your uh, um, scanning your application for uh, for vulnerabilities or misconfigurations, you can can add a GitHub action which will simply do that scan for uh, uh, scan for vulnerabilities and scan for misconfigurations and do that in uh, in a very early stage so if there is something for example a misconfiguration you detect which is uh, for example giving a, a container privileges uh, 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 beyond you know what it's needed uh, you can stop it on, uh, at, at the pr level which is very very important because again because someone who is opening the pull request can auto fix the thing or 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 you know just make sure that that they are standing in the quality and you know you can have all these tests in your CI/CD pipeline, which is very good because you are doing uh, uh, stopping these things very early. So it is very important to uh, to focus your efforts and that uh, uh, blue box part. You know, trying to bring into their PRs both from the uh, uh, both at the application level when with you uh, vulnerability scanning when you look use some kind of a, uh, a source code uh, a security scanner and also at the infrastructure as code repository use a, 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 a scanner to detect issues but even be, uh, before then you can also embed many security checks into your uh, 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 to the step before on your developer machine and find them out at that stage so it even doesn't get to the CI process so in the source code world, obviously you have uh, you know a lot of security plugins in your IDEs. Uh, uh, you know we've brought here a few examples, uh, but you can also have you know the very well known names uh, uh, like Sneak and uh, Check Marks and White Source, uh, which is rebranded re re uh, 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 Mend, uh, which can be used to scan at a very uh, and find security issues at a very very early stage and you know also in you know your uh, your most uh, uh, you know lovable uh, uh, IDE you can also already have your comments there just like in this example and showing you know that there is some kind of an issue which can be uh, uh, which can be exploited in an attack so last but not least obviously monitoring is very important uh, uh, it is very important to have uh, 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 monitoring and seeing that still everything is going right in your production system and at the end I want to show you this picture you can have multiple security gates in your whole environment you can have security gates uh, you know obviously at the deployment phase you can have pre-deployment phases uh, I would say in the registry uh, artifacts 
uh, stage you have in the CI process and you can have also already in your developer phase. So obviously cyber is a risk and there is there are a lot of things which can go wrong but you can you know use the automation and empowerment of all these tools uh, to make you know less risk and make sure that you have a, uh, you have less problems in your environments. So thank you very much for uh, uh, for uh, attending this presentation and I'm here in the chat for Q and A. Thank you.